Good morning and welcome to Easter Lutheran Church. Will you please stand as you are able and sing with us? getting ready to go out and deliver the swag bags. And she looked around and said something like, gosh, there's so many people here that I don't recognize. And I said, I know. That's kind of why I'm excited about bringing us together into one site. And we're in church a lot, so it was weird for us to have so many people that we didn't recognize. And I just think about, I know change is scary, and I reflect on my own life right now. My parents moved in with us right before Christmas. And to not get into the whole story, because that'd be sermon length, um, I just want to share that it changes hard. I love my parents, but change is hard. And I know it's temporary because we're building them a, a new house that they're going to be much happier in, single level, all the things that they need. And we just have to trust in God to provide for us and get us through the uncomfortable and the um, all the things that are going to kind of be icky for a little bit, but there's light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm so excited for that. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, you call us to serve, welcoming all into your presence. You are our strength, our shield, our firm foundation that we can always rely on. Help us to remember this when we're scared, unsure, or uncomfortable. We know we need to continue to trust in you and your love for us, which is never ending. May all we do be for your glory, not our own. In your name we pray, amen.
these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free amazing grace how sweet so good to be with you. I'm Pastor Megan. Preaching today is Pastor Eric. Our one Easter speaker is Becky Danaher, who just gave me the widest eyes. I'm so sorry to call you out before worship has barely started. We also have some special ushers and greeters today. So uh, Tim Team students, this is your call to come on down so we can introduce you. Yeah, just keep coming. That's great. Keep coming on down. Um, a special welcome as our Tim Teamers are coming. Uh, to those of you who are visitors with us this morning, we're so glad you're here. Uh, a special welcome as well to those of you joining us online. We're so glad you're worshiping with us too. Becky, can you just hand your microphone to them? Students, come on up. You want to just hop up here? Yeah, it's, it makes it a little easier for folks to see you. If you would just give us your name, uh, your grade, and where you're going this summer. I'm Jean, I'm a junior, and I'm going to Puerto Rico. I'm Evan, I'm a freshman, and I'm going to Michigan. I'm Ben, I'm a junior, and I'm also going to Puerto Rico. And you are going to see these mission trip, mission trip students with us all the way through Lent. They're going to be our ushers and our greeters. So make sure you pause, you check in with them, uh, ask them why they're excited about their trip. And just know, too, there are options to sponsor these students on their mission trips. So if you want to grab a sponsor, sponsorship form and make sure that you can support them in the work they're going to do, you are welcome to do that as well. I'm going to let these students head back to their posts, and you all get a moment to say good morning to each other. Why don't you share God's peace. High fives, handshakes. Tim Teams, you, you too. Make sure you give people some peace on the way out. Peace be with you. <laughs> and while that peace is being shared, if any kiddos want to come for the children's message, come on down.
Oh my goodness, hi friends. Hi, yeah, come on over. The rest of you can be seated. Kids can come join me up here. Hi everybody. It's so good to see you this morning. Do you remember, maybe some of you were here when Pastor Eric was getting ready to leave for Tanzania and he promised to share with our friends in Tanzania that you say hi to them. Do any of you remember that? That was a little while ago, right? Well, Pastor Eric is back from Tanzania, and I think he's actually in this time zone now, which is also a benefit. Yeah, he's doing great. Um, and he has been sharing all sorts of stories with us about our friends, particularly in Nianzwa. We have a relationship with both a church and with a school and with all sorts of friends in Tanzania. And, and we think this is what we're called to do as God's people, to build relationship, to be with, in community, not just with the people right next door to us, but all around the world. We also think in particular it's important for us to be good friends with kids, with other children, with all of you, and with children around the world as well. And so, because Jesus told us to keep an eye and greet on little children and love each other, we have some greetings for you from our friends in Nianzwa because they care about you too. Let's see that video. <laughs> kiddos just like you who are going to school and who are taking care of their communities and getting excited about being with their friends so we are so excited that they got to share their greetings with us as well can you believe it you said hi and then from the other side of the world some friends said hi back isn't that great hey let's pray together let's pray repeat after me dear god, dear god. we love you Thank you, for kids. Thank you for kids. Help us learn together. Help us learn together. Love, each Love each other. And serve you. And serve you. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining me. You can head back to your seats. And while they are heading back to their seats, we get ourselves ready. It is appropriate in every season, but particularly in this Lenten season, for us to take a moment to breathe, to come to God in honesty, and to receive God's forgiveness. So we come to our God, who is the source of all good things, to receive God's mercy and love. Generous God, whose giving cannot be measured and will never end. We confess that all too often we have kept our own hearts, hands, and minds firmly closed. Make us into your people, those who know a hope rooted in the generous giving of our Creator. Make our words, thoughts, and actions into gifts of faith and love for all people. Make us one people to your glory. Make us aware of the times we haven't loved and shared as you call us. We pause to reflect on these things. God, forgive us for those times when what we want keeps us from hearing what our neighbor needs. Forgive us, loving God. Forgive us for those times when the fear of sharing what we have keeps us from sharing in the abundance of your gifts. Forgive us, loving God. Forgive us for those times when our possessiveness keeps us from following the Spirit's lead. Forgive us, loving God. Our God loves us and abundantly forgives us now and always. In the name of Christ, your sins are forgiven. We are one people, one church, united by faithfulness to our one God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Becky gets to come join us. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Pastor Megan. Hi, Easter. Um, I'm Becky Danaher. I know many of you. Um, I've been a jam 
leader, a confirmation mentor. My husband manages the pantry at the Open Door, which if you don't know, um, this church was one of the three founding churches of the Open Door who just received an amazing award as best nonprofit for last year. So just an at, if you don't know, it's amazing. And I'm probably not the one that should be sharing that because I know there's some pretty prominent uh, Open Door people. But anyway, super proud. Um, I love this church. I very much love this church. Um, share a little bit about um, my story. My family moved from South Minneapolis to Egan about 10 years ago. And we needed to find a church. I needed to find a church. That's me. Um, and we knew we wanted to find, I knew I wanted to find a church that had families, young families, um, where everyone was welcome and where there was active service. That meant a big deal. I grew up Catholic. I'm a recovering Catholic. Can I say that? My deep-seated guilt tells me I can say this. Um, I mean no disrespect, but I really wanted to cast a broad net to find something that fit for our family and for our lives. And if um, what I really wanted was that raw connection with God. Um, I was in the military, and in the military, you're lucky if you get two service options to, to, to connect with God. You get it once a, once a week, and it's protected. And in, in basic training and in Iraq, it is intentionally uncomplicated and simple, just like everything in the military. You have, you get your food and your, your clothing and everything is provided so you can focus on the mission. Um, and through that, you find this raw connection with God because there is nothing else to complicate it. So I knew when I was looking for a church, ideally, that's what I would find. And I found Easter. Um, Easter had so many kids, especially at the 9 o'clock service. Um, Easter had, has women pastors. There were two at the time when we got here, which is amazing. Um, so many programs to be involved in. There was church outdoors, and there was music, amazing music. Um, you don't get kudos to the music all the time. Um, and sometimes I cry when I'm sitting out there and singing because I feel that raw love. And so I knew, I knew I'm going to... I'm going to cry. Um, I knew I had found the church for us. Um, and that was 10 years ago, and time passed. And things got really complicated in life. Kids, kids' activities, kids' stuff, kids' stuff, kids' stuff, right? Work. I was in a corporate job. There was a lot of stuff going on, caregiving for others. And life got in the way. Um, I stopped coming to church. Um, I was burnt out put myself in the hospital, and I knew things had to change because there was just too much going on. Um, so I left my job. I started my own company. I actually led a class here at one point called Prioritize My Life. And it is about intentionally focusing your time and energy on what's most important to you. And it forces you to think about three things that are most important to you and focusing your time, energy, and money around those things. Otherwise, everything gets in the way. Um, the class is about setting goals, right? And, and having activators and accountability partners and removing everything else. And what I found for myself that I was looking for is I was looking for service again. That's what the military was for me and I really wanted to give back and serve. I wanted to be where my kids were because they were growing up so fast. I needed to be in their space and I needed to be sharing and spreading love again. And yes, for others, but I needed it for me. It was, I needed that to fill my cup. Um, and so I became a jam leader and a confirmation mentor. And last year it hit me, and I think I said this in like the leader meeting, is um, I needed to do the things in the church that I was looking for in the church. I came to this church because I wanted an active church to be a part of. And I am a part of this church, so I need to be the activity in the church. And, I, and in that you might be like, duh, that makes sense. But it hit me over the head. You know, the, I am the church. You're the, we are the church. And I say that because that's a song, right? I'm not going to sing it for you because you don't want to hear that. Um, but we are the church. And so be the church that 
we want to see. Be the change. Be the love. Be the everything you want out of this church. You are the church. I am the church. And so that really, really just hit me hard. Um, and I know you're doing that. And, I, and this is my story. So I just wanted to share it with you because it really focused our family on where we're spending our time, where we're spending our energy, and where we're spending our money. And so we try and make improvements each year. And last year we became sustaining donors. I don't know what we call it here. Sustain, where you give automatically every week, right? S sustaining donors. It's an NPR thing, but like that's what I know. Um, and it's helped because honestly it's simplified my life. I don't have to figure out where, what's in my wallet today and all this stuff. And it's also satisfied my guilt because I know if I'm not here, I'm also giving, right? Um, and that's just one way we have grown in making sure our time and resources and money are, 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 are focused on the things that are most important. Um, so sh thank you for listening to me. Um, thank you for anything that you're going to give or prioritize in your life. And thanks for being my church. Appreciate you. Thank you, Becky. Now, our gospel for this morning, this first Sunday in Lent, comes from the gospel of St. Mark, the ninth chapter. I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands. And they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? Because they were silent, for, or but, but they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Well, by now, most of you are aware of my recent trip to our ministry partners in the Lutheran Church in Tanzania, and especially the people of the Nianzwa Parish. Again, those were the children from the primary school that we are, are partners with. I'm so thankful for the amazing opportunity to experience firsthand all three pillars of our partnership directed through Bega Quebega, which in English is shoulder to shoulder, and the St. Paul Area Synod. And those pillars are prayer, presence, and projects. It's helpful that they're all, they all start with P. You, as a congregation, have been heavily involved in this partnership for over 20 years, but it's completely new to me as one of your new pastors. As I explained to many of the people I met there, I'm one of the new pastors at Easter Egan, that's what they call our congregation there, Easter Egan, and I told them, it's a blessing from God to travel all the way here to meet you in just my first year as a new pastor. I said, when I started at Easter, I didn't even know how to say Nianzwa. And now I'm actually here in person, meeting you face to face, and seeing all of the sights of the parish. Now, since time's of the essence here this morning, I won't go into great detail about specifics for now, but there is an upcoming slideshow for that purpose, so keep an eye on the, uh, the leaflet. But for the purposes of today's message... I do want to highlight an overall theme of my experience in Tanzania that made a profound impact on my life. Rarely have I experienced hospitality, welcome, appreciation, and joy 
that I did with the people I met on this visit. In two words, it was humbling and overwhelming to be the representative of Easter Egan as the people of Nianswa Parish celebrated my arrival with them and treated me with all the love that they have felt from this congregation over so many years of partnership and from God as a result of this relationship. Thankfully, I do have a video illustration to share just a glimpse of what this was like. So please turn your attentions to the screen. <laughs> you can get just even a sense of the outpouring of utter joy and appreciation. The experience of their gift of hospitality throughout the days that I was with them was so profound that it actually caused me to question lots of things, but in particular, my, it questioned my standards of greatness in this life and this world that we are living in. To question my standards of greatness to be honest, I used to believe that we in America were the greatest because of things like wealth, influence, technology, and creature comforts. But our partners in Tanzania lack all of those things. And yet I witnessed greatness in their cooperation, simplicity, hospitality, of course, and their service, their, the spirit of service. This experience is what came to mind as I read the words of Jesus for today, describing true greatness in the kingdom of God. When Jesus asked about their argument along the road, the disciples were too ashamed to tell him that it was about who among them was the greatest. But Jesus must have already known this anyway, as he, as he does, because he sat them down and proceeded to explain his definition of greatness. That is the definition of greatness for all would be Christians. Jesus said, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. You see, Jesus wanted the disciples to understand that his idea of greatness was more like the opposite of the world's definition of greatness. And then, as if to drive this point home, he gave the disciples an object lesson. He took a little child and placed it among them. Taking the child into his arms, he said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. I found one commentator's explanation of this scene helpful. As he wrote, At issue for Jesus here is the reversal of values that constitute the kingdom of God. While the disciples are busy strategizing over the topic of personal greatness, Jesus presents them with a, f a new flowchart for organizing the kingdom of God, and children are at the top of the, of the chart. The commentator concluded, It all points to the creation of a new community with altered priorities. This new community would be one where the least of humankind would count. And the least would not only count, they would be affirmed. A good illustration of these altered priorities comes from a story about Mother Teresa as she attended a gathering of royalty and presidents and officials from all over the world. They were there in their crowns and jewels and silks and Mother Teresa wore her cotton sari held together by a safety pin. One of the nobles spoke to her of her work with the poorest of the poor in Calcutta. He asked her if she didn't become discouraged because she saw so few successes in her ministry. Mother Teresa answered, no, I don't become discouraged. You see, God hasn't called me to a ministry of success. 
He's called me to a ministry of mercy. A ministry of mercy. Mercy means to refrain from harming others, to be kind and compassionate, to be concerned for the well-being of others, to forgive those who have wronged you, and always strive to explain your neighbor's actions in the kindest way possible. A side note, great reminder as we head into election season. Just, just leave that there. But according to Jesus, when it comes to the kingdom of God, greatness is the same as being merciful, full of mercy. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. This is so different from what the world teaches us about greatness and an important reminder for all would-be disciples of Jesus Christ. And now, thanks be to God that even we, even when we, like the first disciples, struggle to remember and comprehend what Jesus teaches about greatness in the kingdom of God, Christ goes so far as to show us with his own life, to give up his life as a sacrifice for sinners just like you and me. The path of Jesus' ministry of mercy leads directly to the cross. Remember, a ministry of mercy means to refrain from harming others, to be kind and compassionate, to be concerned for the well-being of others, to forgive those who have wronged you. The good news for you and me is that God is merciful to us. Each and every one of us a sinner. We have all betrayed God. Yet God in his great mercy has given his son to die for us. And for Christ's sake, God forgives you all your sins. On account of Jesus Christ, God has freed you from your sins and failures from all shame and guilt, along with the very power of evil and death itself. Though undeserving of even the least place in the kingdom of God, through his free gift of mercy in Christ, you have been made to be the greatest, apart from any actions of your own, but only through God's mercy and grace for you as you live out the gospel everywhere you go. You are the church, right? You are the body of Christ in the world. Today we are reminded that greatness for Christians doesn't involve striving to accomplish self-serving goals and achievements, but rather striving to always serve others by putting our concerns for them first. In other words, you, yes you, you are forgiven and free for the sole purpose of loving and serving your neighbors. This is the vision and purpose behind everything that we do here as a congregation, including our current One Easter, One Mission campaign and building project. These things have nothing to do with the greatness of this congregation, but rather our shared mission to be servants of all. This is about Easter, Egan, serving our neighbors. Together as a Christian congregation, we do this by teaching our children, by mentoring our youth, caring for our neighbors in need locally and globally, and by encouraging each other with the good news of the gospel. And so, As you leave worship this morning and resume your lives in the world for another week, remember our shared mission here at Easter Egan to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. That you are forgiven. You are free to live out a ministry of mercy first shown to you by Jesus Christ. Joyfully. Joyfully loving and serving your neighbors as Christ first loved you. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now as the band comes back to lead us in song, we continue our worship with the offering.
Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one, the one for whom you loved and gave yourself for humanity. Increase my love. Have me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel. Father's love, oh how you love us, from the homeless to the famous and in between, you formed us, you made us carefully, cause in the end, we're all your children. They would feel the Father's love. So let all my life tell of who you are. And the wonder of your never ending love. Oh, let all my life tell of who you are. That you They would feel the Father's love. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Let's pray together our offering prayer. Loving God, you are more generous to all who work in your kingdom than we can ever imagine. Make us as generous to others as you have been to us, so that these gifts would preach the gospel, love our neighbor, and glorify your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We will continue our worship with time for prayer together. And so I invite you to stand as we join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, conflicts and disputes are many among the nations, cultures, and religions of our world, and even among individuals representing us in our own government. In places of turmoil and terror, Bring a harvest of righteousness and reconciliation, of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, all the woes of those in need are known to you. Send your comfort and peace to any who are terminally ill, any who are sick, and look to you for healing, including Lynette Lepresto, Stephanie Anderson, Joyce Rasmussen, Sandra Allen, Barb Meyer, Ben Cornelis, Dirk Gaynor, and Jody Taylor. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support, including Ruth Simon, Drew Simon, Heather Simon, Sarah Tollefson-Carell, Joyce Rasmussen, 
the family of Barb Ludvigson, Mark Dean, Stephen Butler, and Mark Martinson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful for our friends in Christ who make up our ministry partners locally and globally, including San Marcos in Maya Itza, Divino Salvador del Mundo in Guatemala City, the Nianzwa Parish in Tanzania, Loaves and Fishes, and Catch House. Give to your people such a spirit of servanthood that our fears would give way to childlike trust and gentle regard for all people, remembering as Jesus taught us that the first must be last of all and servant of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, send your spirit to stir up our faith, hope, and love as Easter's capital appeal and building planning work continues. May it always be to your glory and for the good of your church. Guide us in conversation, discernment, and celebration as we come together as one Easter to build the future that you have for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant to us, O God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion this morning will be celebrated by intinction. That means you'll get a wafer and you will dip it into the wine. If you need a gluten-free wafer, there are some in the back of the center aisle and you can grab one as you come forward. If you do not yet commune, you are welcome to come forward and receive a blessing. There will be four stations of communion, so you follow the usher's directions and they'll get you safely there. Um, and I'm sure there are things I have forgotten about the distribution of communion. So the most important things are follow the usher's directions and to trust that these are indeed the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready and all are truly welcome at the Lord's table.
invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. God, you have blessed us with the gift of community and the presence of your Son. May he continue to sustain us as you call us back into the world to your glory. We pray this in his name. Amen. All our jam students and teachers are welcome to head on out to class while we continue to sing. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. because I have some announcements for you. Um, let's get that first slide up, because here's the thing. Get your phones out. It is totally permissible to do this in church. I give you permission. Get your phone out. I'm not joking. This is not a joke. Get your phone out. You, three of you are taking me seriously right now. <laughs> get your phone out. You should be able to pull that QR code up on your phone. Right? Point it at the screen. Am I wrong? Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. No? I'm getting thumbs up. Okay. You can, get, you can get that QR code. So, do you know what a QR code is? It's that black and white square up in there that looks like it's a different language, and it kind of is. It talks to your phone. If you take your camera app out and point it at that, it'll give you a little link. Tap on it. That link will bring you to the page where you can RSVP for our One Easter Festival next Sunday. Next Sunday! That is in one week! I am still not kidding! 
So if you RSVP for us right now, that means that we can make sure there's enough food for every single one of you because the best part of any church celebration is always the food, right? So what's going to happen next Sunday? A few details. One, we'll be worshiping in here. Two, we'll be worshiping at 945 only. One time only, friends. One service, all of us in one room. It is going to be sweaty and chaotic, and it's going to be so much fun. But one service. So if you come at 9 o'clock, just know, hey, it's cool. You're just super early, and that's fine. Stake out your seat, right? We'll worship together. We're going to hear more about the Capitol Appeal that's coming up, and then we are going to have a party. There are going to be crafts. There is going to be music. Uh, there is going to be bouncy houses. I don't know where, but I'm looking forward to finding out um, and there will be food trucks out in the parking lot and it will be free which is why I remind you RSVP because <laughs> we want to make sure there's enough hot dogs and egg rolls for everyone right um, and I've heard the rumor that a costumed pastor Eric has been making the rounds on social media some of you some of you know what I'm talking about you should check out Easter's Facebook page Oh boy, you should check out Easter's Facebook page. Um, I'm really looking forward to being with you next week. I think this is going to be a real blast. So, uh, so come, come, be a part of it. But make sure you RSVP. Did I mention that part? You should really RSVP. Uh, because if they run out of egg rolls before I get there, I will be very sad. So, <laughs> All right, you all got registered right now. You all already turned in your RSVPs, or at least pulled up the QR code on your phone. Um, make sure you mention this to the jam teachers as well when they you know, release your kiddos. Can you say to them, oh, hey, by the way, make sure you get this website. It's really just easter.org slash one site. So you can send them to that link as well. Uh, that has all sorts of information about what's going on at Easter with our appeal and with our building project. So if you need information, you can always go there. Oh, did I make a big enough deal? Are you excited too? Seriously very excited. So I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, in the midst of all this celebration, I cannot lose track of the fact that it is also Lent, which is supposed to be a, a somber season of reflection. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I do invite you to join us for the midweek Lenten services. They'll be at the Hill at 6.30. And for the midweek services, we do the Holden Evening Prayer, which is this beautiful, contemplative singing. It's so lovely. So do come join us at 6.30 at the Hill. And I promise it'll be a little more Lent-like on, on Wednesday night than it will be next Sunday. Um, so you can get that there. Um, Speaking, though, of contemplative time and prayer, as this capital appeal continues to move forward, there's another really special opportunity for you. There's this one Easter, one mission prayer vigil that's coming up. Yeah, there it is. Um, it's this interactive and reflective vigil. It'll be at Easter on the Hill. That's on March 2nd. Anywhere between 2 and 5. Think of it like a prayer open house, okay? So come in at any time between 2 and 5 o'clock on March 2nd at Easter on the Hill. Um, there will be a prayer labyrinth, elements of worship. So there will be kid-friendly activities, uh, lots of opportunity for prayer and reflection. It's turning out to be a really beautiful event. So I hope you stop by. Give it five minutes, give it 15 minutes, stay the whole three hours. I don't know, do what's right for you, but I'm looking forward to being there as well. So I hope you'll join me. Um, on March 10th, which is in two weeks, am I doing that math right? I better do that math right, because the clocks are going to change, um, and they're going to spring forward an hour, which means we lose an hour of sleep, uh, which means especially for our young kiddos, but for any of you brave souls as well, if you just want to spring right out of bed in your pajamas and come directly to church in your pajamas, I welcome them. So come, let me see your footies. I think this will be fantastic. But for the kids in particular, we'll have some Pop-Tarts as well. So a little uh, super nutritious breakfast for you on a challenging morning for all. Um, but it's going to be nice too, right? Because it's good to be together. Uh, and then finally, show me the handout you got on your way in. Oh, you're doing so great with the visuals this morning. I'm really proud of you. If you did not grab one of those handouts this morning, make sure you do grab one on the way out. These handouts have been really lovely. Not only are they talking about the appeal, but they're also talking about prayer and faith and generosity and what it means for our lives. So make sure you're grabbing those on your way out. If you've missed any of the previous editions, just let us know. We can get you another copy too because they're really, really lovely resources. Um, my goodness gracious. 
There is a lot going on at Easter, not the least of which being Pastor Eric in a hot dog costume. <laughs> so make sure you go to our Facebook page. Make sure you check out the website. Uh, make sure you sign up for the leaflet so you can get that weekly email of what's going on. We just want you to be a part of everything happening here at Easter because we are so excited to share this life with you. It is good to be a community together, right? Yes, and so with that, I invite you to stand one more time, friends. People of God, receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let all my life tell of who you are And the wonder of your never-ending love Oh, let all my life tell of who you are That you're wonderful and such a good father You are wonderful and such a good father. Help me to love with open arms like you do. I know that he raises all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, now if they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in joy. To smile, they would feel the Father's love. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you.